Welcome to another episode of Saturdays. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the real life Michael Myers. Michael Myers is a well-known character from the 1978 movie Halloween by John Carpenter. As many of you may remember, the film begins with a young Michael who's revealed when his father removes his Halloween mask. In the movie script, he's described as bright-eyed with a calm, quiet smile on his face. But as the camera pulls back, we get a true introduction to who Michael really was. For years, many people have had questions about this infamous character. And today, we're going to answer one of the biggest questions of all. Who was Michael Myers based on? In the 2003 documentary, Halloween, A Cut Above the Rest, John Carpenter was quoted as saying, I had a class, psychology or something, and we visited a mental institution. We visited the most serious, mentally ill patients. And there was this one patient, he must have been 12 or 13, and he literally had this look. Years later, Carpenter was approached by a film producer who wanted to make a horror movie about babysitters and Halloween. From that brief moment in the mental institution, Carpenter created the character of Michael Myers. And that look that he was talking about was later used to describe Michael on Halloween. Michael had a blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. Living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. John claims to have based this character on that experience, but some believe there was another inspiration behind the film. Stanley Sears Born in 1912, the day he was born, one of the nurses at the hospital thought it would be fun to switch babies around and she gave Stanley to another couple. Both families happily took their new additions home, not realizing the mistake. But there was more bad to come. The other family was involved in an accident on their way home from the hospital. Both they and the real Stanley didn't make it. Not long after, the steers found out about the switch. The nurse in the hospital was sent to prison they grew resentful of Stanley and began to drink heavily. They spent a majority of their time drunk and shouting, locking him in his room and trying to make him miserable as a punishment for not being theirs. They later would have a daughter named Susie and she became their entire world. They gave her everything she could ever want while still treating Stanley like he was the bane of their existence. Susie picked up on it, and she too eventually began to treat Stanley very poorly, often hitting or kicking him, and always yelling at him. In school, Stanley was often bullied for how he looked or how he behaved. His sister did nothing to help, often joining in when other kids would tease or mock him. He had no friends and got very poor grades. In 1923, when Stanley was 11, all he wanted to do was go trick-or-treating, like all the other kids. He had never been allowed to go. His parents always said no, but yet allowed Susie to go to a Halloween party the night before Halloween. Little did they know this would be the final straw. Just hours after Susie returned home, Stanley snapped. He took a butcher knife from the kitchen and used it on Susie until he knew she was gone. He then turned on his parents, leaving them lying on their bed. Finally, he turned to the family dog. And when Halloween came the next day, he went trick-or-treating for the first time ever. Stanley attacked as many of his bullies as he could, and at one point, 
He even invaded one of the homes of his bullies, attacking him and his entire family before returning to the streets to collect candy. He was having the time of his life, stayed out until the morning, sitting on a swing at the school playground, gleefully eating his candy. That was when the authorities swooped in, and he was taken to a private psychiatric institution where he was studied for the next 13 years. All records of Stanley were suppressed, including his Halloween spree. To the rest of the world, it was though he never existed. Everyone wanted to know what made this boy snap. What gave him the strength and ability to do this? He opened up a study, first looking for signs of the paranormal, but found nothing. Not even the slightest sign of a demonic possession. But they didn't stop there. They knew he was a danger, and they continued working on him. But then, on Halloween 1936, a couple of orderlies started to harass Stanley. He was now 24 years old. He had grown quite a bit over the past 13 years. Standing at 6'4 and 260 pounds, Stanley snapped. Again. He then walked right out the front doors of the institution where he was met with resistance. The guards had been alerted and were standing armed in the parking lot. It didn't stop Stanley, though. He walked straight out. And although he was injured, he managed to take out everyone who would try to stop him. Some say that Stanley possessed superhuman strength and that he was able to lift and throw a car. Others say he was just that terrifying that he felt no pain. With there being no legitimate or legal record of Stanley Steers, we can never really know for sure if he existed. I really hope you enjoy this video, and as always, just please remember to like this video if you like this video, and I'll see you guys next time.